hopefully you found the first portion of this discussion on adding an interactivity fairly straightforward. And this gave me a wonderful opportunity to introduce you the concept of instance names, which is something we're going to talk about more in this exercise, and also the actions panel, something else that we're going to use more in this exercise as well. And also we saw quite a lot that can be created through the code snippets panel as well. But for now, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of the actions panel and I'm just going to scroll down just a little bit. We have the two player control buttons that I've created here. These are indeed buttons. Let me show you what's going on here. I'm going to head over to the library panel and collapse part one and I'll expand the part two folder. And what we have here are our two player control buttons. We have controller play and controller stop. Very simple. In the previous exercises, you saw the very simple rollovers that are applied to these guys, really no big deal. And then the other thing that I have is a movie clip symbol called spinning jack-o-lantern. And if I select that guy, we get a tiny play button, by the way, way up in the top portion of the library panel. So you can preview that. It's a, just a very simple animation of a spinning cartoon jack-o-lantern. And this guy, by the way, is a graphic symbol called jack-o-lantern. So he's embedded inside the movie clip. Okay, so that's all we have. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is I want to drag and drop an instance of my spinning jack-o-lantern onto my stage. So I'm just going to drag and drop this guy over just like this. I'm just going to flip into my align panel for a moment, and I want to align this guy to the dead center of my stage, just like that. There we go. Just so I know exactly where he is. And then what I want to do is I want to set this up so that you and I can control the playback of this movie clip symbol using our play and stop buttons. So, you know, if I go and preview my movie here right now, controller command enter on your keyboard, you'll see that the animation just plays by itself over and over and over, it just loops over and over and over. And you'll see that the player control buttons don't do anything right now. So what I wanna do, what I wanna build here with you is the ability to press stop and have that movie clip stop playing and then I want the ability to press play again and then have that movie clip continue playing, okay? Now, yourself in the real world, it may not be spinning pumpkin heads. It could be something else. Really, anything that you can stick inside a movie clip symbol, you can control in this fashion. It's really, really cool, but it's going to involve some action script as well. Now, before we get to the action script, what I want to do is I want to set up my instance names. And again, this is something that you were introduced to just a little while ago. So right now what I have on the stage is an instance of my spinning jack-o-lantern movie clip. That's what the properties panel tells me here. But notice at the top, we have a spot here for instance name. In other words, what I could have is I could have multiple instances of this movie clip symbol sitting on my stage and each one could have its own unique instance name. And then what I could do is I could control each instance independently of all the other instances. Okay, it's very, very powerful stuff. So all I'm doing is I'm giving this instance a designation when I apply an instance name to them, okay? So I'm gonna go and make sure that this guy is selected and then way up at the very top of the properties panel, click inside that instance name field and give this guy a name of some sort. Don't use any spaces, by the way. Now, maybe if this is your first time out, use the exact same naming that I'm using because we'll need to remember these names when we go to create our action script. So I'm gonna call this guy my movie clip. Very simple, okay? There we go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially gonna repeat that for my two player buttons. We've got the play button and the stop button. So I'm gonna grab my play button and I'm gonna give him an instance name as well way up inside the properties panel. Again, a unique identifier. I'm gonna call this guy play movie. How's that? There we go. And actually, I'm going to make sure that that's an uppercase P. Capitalization counts, okay? So be careful. So play movie and any guesses for the stop guy, we're going to call that guy stop movie. All right, there we go. Perfect. So we have the instance names set, which is great. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set up some action script to control the playback of this movie clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into the actions panel. So I'm going to head up to the window menu and then down to actions. 
There's the actions panel. We already have some actions in there, some action script inside the actions panel from the previous exercises. So what I'm gonna do here, this is all happening inside the first frame of the actions layer, don't forget. So all I'm gonna do is just after the closing curly bracket there on line 14, for myself at least, I'm just gonna hit enter a couple of times, just like that, no big deal, okay? And give me a moment, maybe I'll stretch this out just a little bit more so we can see a little bit more. There we go. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna set it up so that my stop button plays the animation. Don't forget when I preview my movie, the movie clip symbol is already playing by default, right? So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna set up my stop button so that when I click on it, the movie clip stops playing, all right? So inside the actions panel, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna target my instance name. We called that guy stop movie, right? So all I'm doing here inside the actions panel is saying, hey, that symbol that has an instance name of stop movie, I wanna interact with it, I wanna do something to it. So I'm gonna say stop movie, period, and then add event listener. Okay, and we're doing this all by hand. Watch your capitalization here, okay? Add event listener and then open bracket. And I'm gonna say mouse event, just like this, followed by a period, and then all in uppercase click. So in other words, when the user clicks on the instance name stop movie, what I wanna have happen is, and I'm gonna put in a comma and then a space, and then I'm gonna type in stop movie. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna create a function. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do is just so there isn't as much confusion here is I'm gonna say stop the movie. How's that? Because we are not interacting with an instance at this point, what we're doing is we're calling something called a function, okay? All right, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my bracket and then I'm gonna finish things off with a semicolon just like this, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll hit enter on my keyboard, maybe once, maybe twice, something like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and create my function, okay? So go ahead and type in function space, and then we're gonna type in the name of the function that we're referring to or targeting to here up in the first line of our code. So stop the movie, okay? Or stop the movie clip or whatever you called it there, okay? All right, then open bracket, type in a lowercase e followed by a full colon, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in mouse event, just like this. You can see I have some code assistance happening here as well inside the actions panel, which is nice. And then close the bracket, hit enter one more time, and then we're gonna throw in a squiggly bracket. I call them squiggly brackets or curly brackets, whatever you wanna call them there. And then I'm gonna hit enter and notice what happens here. We're taken down, we have an indent and the closing curly bracket is inserted there for us. So now what I wanna do is I wanna target the movie clip symbol itself. What did we call that movie clip symbol? Well, I called mine my movie clip, if you'll recall. So I wanna interact with this guy, so I'm targeting that instance name, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically tell this guy to stop. So period, stop, and then open bracket, close bracket, semicolon, just like that. All right, now sit tight. In the next exercise, we'll go and preview this guy and see if it works.